Today I'm going to show you a fantastic alternative to Photoshop that's free, that's online, and is also a very good way of getting ideas if you're dumb and brainless like me. So to start off, go to the first link in the description and you will see Canva. Now I highly suggest you logging in. I'm not logged in for this one because I use my actual personal account for Canva, but it's very helpful because you can save all your images online and you can look at them on your phone, on a different laptop, whatever you want. So in this particular video, I'm going to make a logo and I'm gonna show you how I kind of made my logo. If you wanna make anything else, all you gotta do is just search for anything else in the search bars. So if you wanna make YouTube channel art, guess what you search for? YouTube channel art, and then you click on that. In this case, I just want to make a logo, so I'm gonna type in logo, and you might notice I have a ton of options. I'm just going to do logo. Once you click on logo, you'll see this thing pop up, and on the left, you will have a bunch of templates. Please note, templates are like the best way of setting up a logo. This is why I love Canva so much, because I am dumb and lazy. My logo is 100% a template, so keep that in mind. If, I, if my logo looks good to you, then your logo could look great if you find the perfect template. So in this case, I can't find anything important. And mind you, these do change uh, frequently. So if you don't find something you like sooner or later, if you refresh, check another day. So to start off on the left, we have a whole bunch of things that we could select. We have elements, uploads, photos, text, audio, videos, and background. Since we're making a logo, we don't need audio and we probably don't need video. So I'm going to ignore those, but let's start off with a background. Click on background and you have a whole bunch of options. What I usually do is I find something very colorful. For example, uh, colorful and bright, actually. I was gonna do the space one, but that's a little too much. In this case, I found this. It's colorful and bright, looks good, but there's a watermark on it. No! Sometimes Canva's really good at indicating when something is premium or not, but in the case of backgrounds, it's hard to tell which ones are free and which ones are premium. You do have to hover over them and you have to see the free word on the bottom right. So in this case, I'm going to click on the image and press backspace and it will delete it. Now this process of finding something that you like is very much trial and error. So I'm going to click on this background, go to adjust and increase the blur. And that's actually something that I can deal with right now. So this is going to be my background. It's literally just a colorful image, add a little bit of blur on it. And now it looks fancy dancy, little cool little color things, gradient stuff. I know words. So now that the background sorted with a whole bunch of hesitation, let's move on to actually adding stuff. So we can go to the elements tab. And when you go to the elements page, it looks like you don't have a whole lot of options to be honest. And that's because you need to search something. So things I would search for are gradient. Uh, you'll get a pop-up like this sometimes. You gotta click X on it. But things I'd search for are gradient, lines, uh, patterns, whatever. In this case, I absolutely love searching up gradients. Now with these options, if you have a crown on the bottom right, that is a pro feature and that costs money to use. And on the bottom left, if you see a whole bunch of numbers like 5.0 seconds, that means it's animated. So if I click that in, you notice it's animated. But in this case, I already have my background. So I'm going to delete that. Now in this case, I haven't really found an element that works well for me. I just wanna actually have some text for my logo. So I'm going to go down to text. Now I've skipped over photos and uploads because uploads is really self-explanatory. You just upload an image and you can use it in Canva. And photos is also kind of self-explanatory. You can search for like literally anyone. You can search for people, search for objects, and you can include that in. I don't know. You probably don't want to someone's face as your logo. It just makes no sense. But I'm going to go to text. And now you have a whole bunch of presets. These presets are actually really helpful because, whoa, look at this. Is this Bukhari script? It is. Whoa, I found the template that I used for my logo. So like I said, templates are fantastic because literally most of the work can be done for you if you just find something that you like. So in this case, this is Bukhari script. I am going to adjust the words to NT. Oh my gosh. Breathe, double click on it, T-O-T-S. And now I have my logo here, but the colors are incorrect. So I'm going to click on it, go to the top, and you will see a whole bunch of text options. First off, you see it's a Bukhari script. You can see the font size and you can see the font color. Click on text color and change it to white. And now you have white text. Do that for the TS part, change the text color to white. And now you have NTTS, but how do I resize this? Well, you can click on the individual text line and change the font, or you could just alt and click on this part here and resize it and make it as big as you want. Now, there is something to keep in mind when you are making a logo. A lot of websites crop out your photo into a circle. So go to elements, search up circle, and you will see the circle here. Just click on it and you want to resize it to the biggest size you can so that the edges of the circle hit the edges of your image. Now go to position and click backwards and make sure it's at the very back so you can't click backwards anymore. And this will show you how individual applications will crop your logo. 
Now that I have this circle in the background, I can definitely notice that my logo is going to be off-centered. So to move it, you just need to click on the group of text and move it around. So I'm going to set it here. And that's basically what I want, but there's a little bit of an issue. I think the text is too close together and it's going to be hard to read. Legibility is something I try to strive for, but obviously I'm not perfect. So to move individual parts of the text, I need to click on the group and I need to go to the top right and click ungroup. Now what this will do is allow me to drag each line of text. So I'm going to drag this one, I'm going to click on it, and instead of dragging it, I'm gonna use a more precise method. I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard and I'm going to move it up slightly. Then on the bottom part, I'm gonna click on it and move it down a little bit more. And there you go. Now the font is separated, it's a lot easier to read. So once I move them, I've noticed something a little bit weird. The T and the S are too far apart and the N and the T are too close together. So I'm gonna click on the line of text, the NT. Then I'm going to go to this part here, the little spacing thing, click on it. And letter spacing, I'm going to increase it a tiny bit. What that will do is put a space between both of the letters. And now for the T and S, I'm going to click on it, go to the line letter spacing. Then I'm going to enter a number of negative 10 and that will move it closer together. Maybe I want a little bit more, so I'm going to do negative 20. And now it seems pretty decent enough. And what I'm going to do if I want to select two things is click on one thing, hold shift and click on the other thing. And now I'll be able to move it as a group. And if I want to reset it back as a group, I can click on group. And now it is one solid object. And when I click on it, I don't have to worry about clicking on the other thing press Control Z to undo, and now you have your logo. So now that I have everything kind of positioned how I want it, there is something I need to remove, and it's that circle, because I need to fix the colors for the shadow and a whole bunch of other things to make it look perfect. But I'm unable to do that if I have this circle in the way. So to get this circle deleted, if you try clicking on it, you'll notice you just keep on selecting the text. No matter what you do, you won't be able to click on the circle. And that's because you need to click on the text, click position, and send it backwards. So now the circle will be in front, which will allow you to click on it. And now you can press the backspace button and delete it. Now we have our logo without the circle positioned correctly, but the colors kind of look like garbage. So to change the drop shadow on this actual text, you need to click on the text. Then you need to go to effects. And this is where you get a whole bunch of options. And this is where it gets very fun. So in our case, we have a shadow. So the amount of shadow showing will be your offset. So you can increase or decrease it. I would just leave it as 31, exactly what it was before. I think maybe not, I'm not sure. <laughs> then you have direction, which will just change the direction of the shadow itself. So once again, if you have your shadow like this and the other one like that, it can get a little confusing. Then you can change a couple more options, blur, transparency. Blur is very helpful if you actually want a drop shadow instead of this weird kind of like echo or, and this color sucks, let's be honest. So click on the color and change it to black or whatever you want. Black is usually the best. You could do gray. You could also do white if you want it to be glowy. But once again, this is just something you have to deal with and tinker around with. I personally think just having a dark background color is the best. And you can also just knock down the transparency if you want it to be more or less there or visible. And I'm going to set the blur to zero because I want it to be a carbon copy and show a little bit of depth in the image. Now you have a couple more color options. So you can have it as hollow, which will just completely ruin your shadow and a whole bunch of other things. You can have it as glitch. You could have it as neon. And you can also change it to curve around an object. So in this case, this curve number, I believe, is going to be the radius of the curve. If you don't want that, just press Control Z to undo it. And at some point it will remove. And I'm going to press Control Z all the way until I get back to my normal text. Now that I've set up the text exactly how I want it, I'm going to go to the second part of the text and do exactly the same thing. So, boom, it's that easy. I didn't do a whole lot. And now you technically have most of your logo done. Now let's say you finally got Discord Nitro because Epic Games was giving it away and you want an animated profile picture. What do you do? Well, you can actually animate specific things. So in this case, if you click on text and click animate, you have a couple options that show up. You have block, you have typewriter, send, bounce. You have a whole bunch of options. Literally, this is how to animate it if you want a text animation and you can click page animations if you want something different. So in this case, whoa. Wow, fancy stuff, I tell you. And now that you have the tumble as your animation, if you click play on the top right, it'll show you the final result. And animations are pretty sloppy because if this is going to be a looping GIF, then it's going to just disappear out of nowhere, fly in, and then it's just going to disappear and then fly in, and it's not going to fly in and fly out. So this is how to create more of a text-based logo, but let's just change it and make it maybe look a little bit fancier. So instead of doing all this stuff, building it up from the ground up, I'm gonna to go to templates, I'm going to find a specific preset I like, the cake shop. There we go. And now instead of having NTTS, I could say, there you go. 
Now you can have your own custom logo. And once again, the same circle rule applies where if you have an element, put a circle on top and resize it all the way to the max. Then you send it all the way to the back. That's how your logo will look if it's cropped. So you might want to first off, delete the circle. Now, if you try to resize this image so it's a little bit bigger and you hold Alt and resize it, you'll notice these dots do not actually follow the resize. And that's because you can actually just select them like this. Then you can hold Alt and resize it just like that. Perfect. So keep that in mind. You could select all the manually or you could just use a bounding box. It's really straightforward. And once you have it exactly how you want it, the EMA Cake Shop, then click on the download button. And now you have a couple of download options. If you had an animated thing, you just need to scroll down and go to GIF, and that will save it as an animated picture. But if you just have a static image, then PNG and JPEG is basically what you're going to want to focus on. In this case, I would highly suggest using PNG because it's a higher quality image. Click on PNG. Now, once you click on PNG, you won't be able to save anything else, and that's because those are premium features. But if you click download, it will prepare the design, and you will get the download. And if you open it up, you get the EMA Cake Shop, and... Let's say I wanted the old logo, I could always just undo a whole bunch, like a whole bunch, and now I have the normal logo, and if I click download, mind you, if I click play, I have that weird quick animation, I need to change the time to five seconds. If I click play, it'll have the animation, click on download, then go to GIF, and if I click download, it will turn it into a GIF, and when it's done processing and done downloading, which takes a heck of a lot of time, if I click on it, you will notice it is now a GIF. Anyways, hopefully at the end of all this, you guys will be some graphic design nerds and you'll have two fantastic logos at the end of it. This one on the left is one I made in two seconds, like almost two seconds because I used a preset. And the one on the right took a little bit more nuance, but it was custom and something that I personally wanted. So once again, Canva, strong tool. You have basic preset or you have monkey brain custom thing. I'm going on and on. I love you. Good night.